Oh. Hi everyone, welcome to Lockdown Lunch with me, Kelly Ransom, where I make it all up. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm coming to you live from Boston, Massachusetts. Thank you for joining us now or later. Um, I, For those of you who've never, ever watched an episode of this, I started this podcast. Podcast, oh my god, we were just talking. I'm fried right now, guys. Um, I started this broadcast when I realized that I was going to have to be staying home a lot more, and I wanted a way to share other people's experiences and stories of lockdown so that we could put them all in a little YouTube time capsule and watch them in like 10 years and be like, wow. <laughs> so today I'm so excited to welcome, we have an out of state person, New Hampshire. Um, I'm so excited to welcome Joel Van Patten. Welcome, Joel. Thank you. Thanks for having and me today. I'm excited. It's beautiful where you are. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Joel Van Patten. I'm a, a oil painter up in Nashua, New Hampshire. I'm, I'm Boston based, but I uh, live in Nashua right on the border. So I consider myself in the Boston metropolitan area. So that's good. There you go. <laughs> right. You yep. can't take the person out of Boston. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, if I had my druthers, I'd probably be in the city. So that's it. <laughs> yep. So I'm so excited to talk about art with you today. But first thing is first, so that I know because I'm fried. What day is it? Um, that's a good question. Uh, Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, right. that's a good answer. It's the right answer, but it's not Number... the best answer. I wish it was like Thursday or Friday. Right? Yeah, it's maybe some somewhere it's Thursday. <laughs> So you have been locked down for a while, or not locked down, but you've been sheltering in place at home in New Hampshire with your kids, and um, I'm just curious, how did it all go down for you? Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, like most artists, I got a, a day job, so we got to do that. So uh, we got a notification, um, you know, early March that we were going to be doing that. We, we were kind of uh, work from home anyway. Uh, with that role. So that's okay. So um, I'm getting to be a professional at working from home. I've been doing about two months um, now for the career. But, um, you know, as an artist, it's um, not too difficult because we're always isolated and locked down, you know, yeah. to, to be an artist is kind of a, a, you know, singular, I guess, to a degree, kind of a selfish activity. It's uh, hard to involve, you know, multiple people, especially when yeah. you're doing you know, oil painting and that kind of a project. It's very difficult to get a bunch of people involved there. So I don't think it's as hard for an artist to do it as it might be for some people because we're used to that, you know, hiding in our studio for hours or days on end working on a project. Right. And we'll talk more about that because I'm very interested in that. I wish I had sure. that experience already before all of sure. this. Right. Um, so... In Boston, we just, in a, or Massachusetts, we're going through this whole like four phase plan of opening and we're not starting for like another week. It's just the whole thing. But is New Hampshire opening up back at all? Yeah, you know, we're starting to see some rollouts this week of some different types of businesses opening. Um, you know, I'm not privy to all of it of the full list. My understanding, you know, uh, things like barbershops, salons, uh, from what I understand, and yeah, I've got the notifications from my friends that are in that industry. They can do, I think it's four people at a time. They have to okay. wear masks the whole time. There's uh, online paying only. You can't even I don't, use cash or anything, I guess. Wow. And uh, no magazines in the waiting room. It's kind of a unique uh, list and experience. I don't know how they would get around the ears with a mask on, but I don't know how that works. But so you just see a bunch of people with like, uh, you know, shaggy uh, around the ears or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know how they're going to do that. So that ought to be interesting to see. My husband's yeah. putting in a lot of work on his quarantine beard. So. Oh, yeah, that's me, too. I'm, I'm totally uh, <laughs> looking, just, yeah, looking just, good. Just going for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you are a contemporary. My cats are running around it right now, so I apologize if they run that's into okay. the shot. Um, you're a contemporary realist oil painter, and I'm curious as to how you got started in that field. Okay, sure. Yeah, so my past, I was always uh, into art. You know, we start out as artists, as children. Um, I always say, you know, art is proverbial. So we, we use that to convey our, our thoughts and emotions as children. But as we get older, we start to replace that uh, with words, you know. And so then all of, all of a sudden we start to lose 
uh, the art. We go more into using our words to express how we're feeling. But some of us keep it, we retain it, never lose it. Um, I could always draw and draft well. Uh, in school, my brother was uh, an aspiring comic book writer, but could not cool. illustrate. So he would uh, ask me to do his drawings for him of his characters and his stories and things. So from you know basically age seven on, I lived in this little, I don't know, six by eight bedroom stuff packed of comic books and craziness all around me. And, you know, stay up at night at the end of my bed, drawing on my little table to two in the morning. Um, so I did that forever. Um, wow. I had a portfolio scholarship to Savannah College of Art and Design for storyboard illustration, uh, sequential art, which is comic book design. That's the only, uh, at the time, was one of the only schools to do it. Um, I didn't end up going. I took another career path. Uh, I got into oil painting uh, around 2010. My mother had gotten uh, you know, sick with Alzheimer's and I needed something to occupy my mind that was cathartic. Um, yeah. I guess prior to that, people would ask you too, like, oh, uh, you know, what type of art do you do? Well, I'm an illustrator. Well, what do you illustrate? Well, you know, superheroes and fantasy stuff. And they're usually like, okay, guy. Like, yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> no, that's so I cool. Figured, I figured people would take you a little bit more seriously if you started the oil paint. Um, and I did that, you know, 2010 and then just kind of fell in love with that medium. It's very uh, forgiving and easy to work with because you make a mark, you don't like it, just take a rag and wipe it right off and get it out of there. So I've been doing that about 10 years now. Wow. So where do you show your stuff or do you have a studio or? Yeah, I make my studios here in Nashua. It's a home based studio right out of the house here, just uh, on the other side of this camera. Uh, so I work there. Um, you know, uh, I have a very patient wife that puts up with all of my uh, antics going on with all that and paintings all over the <laughs> house and that kind of thing. So that's good. Uh, currently, I'm working with uh, Suzanne Schultz, uh, Canvas Fine Arts out of Boston. Hi, Suzanne. So, <laughs> hi, Suzanne. Um, so we're doing that. Uh, we have a show scheduled to go in July down there, which is going to be interesting at her gallery because of the recent events, you know, with the mayor yeah. canceling uh, 4th of July activities and things. That's going to be really interesting to see what happens. That's that's what I got lined up so far and just currently working on some new works. And you have a website? I'll I do. Put it it's, in our uh, YouTube description. Yeah, it's uh, vanpattenart.com. So my last name, then art.com. It'll take you right over there. Awesome. Yeah. And then you've been doing a Facebook Live, you mentioned? Yeah, Friday nights uh, from 8.30 to 9. I've just been hosting uh, you know, a live show. It's kind of uh, channeling my inner Bob Ross, I guess, but it could be. Oh, about I love it. <laughs> it can be about anything. People are welcome to, you know, comment like they are on your show and uh, join in. And then I uh, will go in uh, afterwards and I'll clean it up and edit it. So it's available for rebroadcast on uh, YouTube as well. Uh, Van Patten Art is my YouTube channel, too. So That's if you want great. fancy you're, graphics you're and titles, you can find that. I, I just download the video and throw it up there. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's one of the things, you know, with this uh, lockdown is uh, I learned how to video edit. So I've had the time to do that. So I made that a point to go out and learn how to do video editing and things. Yeah, so it's one good. of those things that I have in my in my professional life right now. I haven't had no choice but to learn how to do it because that's all it is right now. That's it. You know, that's um, one of the things with the art world is that we have to adapt. Uh, we're we're yeah. going to mention, you know, talk about how it changes the art world. Um, we had to come up with a new way. Think about it. You can't do traditional methods of bringing art to people like, you know, have them come to a gallery at a major right. opening or anything like that. That might be some time before we see that happen. So my thought, I love openings. Right. Yeah. It's, it's really fun. And then they stabbed the uh, first Friday down in Sowa. So that was uh, a great event too. And it's kind of disappointing that, you know, that might be put on hold for who knows long. Right. So, yeah. um, but now we got to think about how do we get people the art in front of people, you know, and uh, I think it's like most things. If you do business as usual, um, you may not find yourself in business, I guess. So you have to. Yeah, continue no, it's to, true. Yeah. So I, that was kind of my idea with the videos was kind of bring people, you know, into my world, show them my process, have them answer questions, uh, learn a little bit more about, you know, my narrative, my story. And then uh, I'm guess I'm a teacher by nature. So I always sort of teaching people um, online. And then, you know, I'm also doing uh, art reviews, not only my own stuff, but of other artists too. So those are coming out oh, shortly. Cool. Yeah, I think that'll be a nice feature, you know, share, share in the festivities and have them, uh, you know, I can talk about their art online too. 
That's an awesome experience. That's really right. smart. I'm glad that you're doing that. Yeah. Um, so I'm really interested in this because I personally am not, and I don't consider myself an artist, but I'm not having a hard time with the isolation piece. I'm just, an, I'm an introvert. Surprise. Um, but I, you, you think that artists are having a lot easier time in isolation right now. And like you mentioned, because they're always like working from home and uh, what are like, are there, is there anything that's, that's changed at all? And, or when it comes to creating art, like in your space through this or, um, like, have you, yeah, had, would, do you think artists have to adapt differently? I would say, you know, one of the hardest things that you wouldn't even think about is just trying to get some basic supplies. Uh, a lot of things are that's a great uh, point. slow to arrive, uh, in the mail, you know, you can order online and everything that's all well and good, but you know, it's taking weeks to get, just simple things like a, you know, a primer for a painting, you know, it's yeah. like, these would be three, four days. Um, you, you know, the local stores, they do curbside pickup, but they're not even stocking it. So uh, wow. you kind of have to plan ahead and say, okay, I got half a tube of this. So I got to start ordering now. Whereas before you could get, you know, down to the bottom and do it that way. Um, wow. So I've been working, you know, just with the materials that I have, some of the older stuff that I haven't touched in a while. Um, you know, trying to be creative with uh, even just taking items like uh, I made some paper mache models for a still life this week. I took some oh. uh, trash out of my recycle bin and, <laughs> you know, uh, kind of nailed that together and covered it in paper mache. So just trying to use the resources at your home that you you might go out and otherwise, you know, buy or purchase those things. But it's more difficult to do. So you're looking at, right. you know, using what's around you more more readily. Are you finding that you or other artists that you know are like more inspired right now and are creating more or is it more of the same or is it less? Um, I think it's, uh, I've seen a lot more, you know, things going online. So I feel that artists may have more time to do their social media, their websites, that kind of thing. Uh, I mean, for sure, you're going to see some art that's going to be influenced by current events. Um, I try to, you know, I like to have a message in there, but I try not to be overly uh, political. I let you yeah. make that interpretation. If you want to go in and find a message in there, then that's great. But I'm not going to come out and make it, you know, very obvious. Um, I mean, you're going to see, you know, obviously some artists that are more black and white. They're right to the point with that type of thing. But you go in and you find the meaning if there is one. Maybe there isn't one at all. But if you find one, that's even that's better for me. So <laughs> that I makes my it. job easy. <laughs> Right. No, I've that's definitely it. purchased art before where I've told the artist, like, oh, I see this. And they're like, that's not what I thought it was, <laughs> but that's cool. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's great to use your imagination. Yeah. Um, I love it. But so what's your process? Do you, are you like up in the middle of the night all of a sudden with an idea? Or do you have like a set time that you create and make space? Do you have a ritual? Yeah, sure. So in terms of like the mechanics in my mind, I, I uh, use the analogy. It's like a, a table saw in a wood shop that's constantly running and you can't unplug. It just it goes and goes. Um, but in terms of actually, you know, putting, uh, you know, putting the, the, the pen to the paper, I would say, you know, I work most of the time at night. I got three young kids, so it's hard during the yeah. day and difficult with those distractions. Um, so I work, you know, eight to midnight most days uh, in the wow. studio. Um, it gives me my think time, my creative time to do that. Um, but it's constantly, you know, just looking at the world around you, you could say, okay, look at how the light's hitting, you know, this plant here in the background. And you just kind of pick up on those things. And uh, I think one of the biggest uh, tips is keep a notebook with you and write things down because you will absolutely lose those thoughts. It's um, so true, yes. Right? Yeah. I, um, you know, in the past, I've worked a lot from photographs. Recently, I've moved more into uh, working. Uh, I built this, uh, I call it, it's a light box, and it's basically two foot by three foot, and I set my still lifes up in there. Um, so that's in the studio now. And wow. I, I like working from real life actually a lot better now than I do from the, the photography, because your screen, uh, you're even seeing these images here on this video, it's going to be very falsely bright versus and if you were in reality, this would be very dim and dark because it, it, it yes. blows up the color. And we talk about that in my videos more about how the, the influence of the monitor and the picture screen is going to influence the colors of your art also. 
So there's so many different types. I was just thinking there's so many different types of painters and types of paint. So you do oil painting. I'm wondering for those who might not be familiar watching, um, what uh, contemporary realist is. Yeah, sure. So um, I would think, you know, contemporary realism is the realism is more of like when you go to, I guess let's define realism first. When you go and see a painting and you, you can tell what it is, right? It's yep. not uh, a, an abstraction that has to have uh, a plaque, you know, up by it that tells you what it's all about. Mm -hmm. uh, con I guess contemporary realism is taking, it could be taking non-traditional subjects, put them into the painting, uh, or also how you apply the paint to that, uh, that image. So if you look at some of my images online, uh, I, my my portraits. I really like to make the the subject very uh, you know as real as I can, but then the yeah. area around them is broken down, and I do that with uh, squeegees and rollers and all kinds of different techniques because I kind of think it represents the world around us too. So that I guess I that. Uh, abstraction of the background in conjunction with the realism of the subject makes it contemporary. So. Uh, you know, living, current, contemporary, the subject matter can be, and also uh, the technique and, and making the painting and how it finally looks. You describe it so well. I feel like I can see an example <laughs> in my mind. Yeah. Well, thank so, you. Yeah. yeah, so, I you know, early on you start out when you're painting, you know, you try to define a style. So I started out doing a lot of things like impressionism, you know, pointillism, uh, you know, even playing around, uh, you know, doing all those types of things as well. Um, but what I end up thinking, uh, you have to say to yourself uh, what you like and what you don't like. So it's like, okay, I like, I like the challenge of doing the realism, um, but then, you know, I don't like abstract. So I kind of went away from, what I don't like and went into what I do like. And that's how I was able to define uh, the style. It takes a long time uh, as an artist to try to come up with a definitive style uh, that you can instantly look at somebody's work and just know yeah. right away um, that, uh, that it's them, you know, in, in their work. That's, a, that's a, a wonderful thing if you can get to that point as an artist, but it's very difficult to do at the same time. Thank you for explaining that. Well, I took a little freeze break. Sure, that's okay. <laughs> my my um, mind might have a freeze break too. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so you said that shows and stuff are gonna they're gonna have to change, but how? So and things are going online. Are there any other ideas that you have about how the art world is going to change in the future when the, you know this is kind of over? Yeah, sure. So uh, we were uh, talking, you know, uh, peers in the industry and things that with people being uh, home as much as they are, they may start viewing uh, their home as their sanctuary now. So they want to say like, yes. oh, I'm tired of looking at this, you know, blank wall uh, for the last 10 years. It's time to do something different to that. I know most of us have done, uh, you know, uh, reorganize our closets, our yep. bookshelves. Uh, the gardens have never looked so good in the grounds and things because you know, <laughs> we've got nothing else to do. So I think that people are going to find that uh, sense of solace in their home and want to try to, you know, uh, uh, treat it well. And then uh, there's also the fact, uh, you know, that when we go through some type of a tragedy, there might be some people that have the mental mindset, I better get busy living or busy dying, like they yep. say in Shawshank Redemption, too. Um, so I think you're gonna see a push of people trying to go and, and acquire these things for those reasons, but how, and in terms of how do we bring them to uh, you know new people? Because only 6% of the world actually buys art. So how do we get That's that in front? That's an interesting statistic. Right, and they don't buy it all the time either. So it's not right. like every month you can count on 6% of you know 7 billion people buying art, they don't. It's, it's very, very limited. Um, so we were talking uh, in terms of how the shows look, it might be, uh, you know, maybe it's 10 or 15 people, whatever the max capacity is per time. It's maybe it's by uh, invite only. Um, uh, yeah, we've thought about um, maybe even doing some shows at people's homes. So you're, you would oh. say, okay, for, for 30 days, we'll hang a show in your house. And then you and your friends can 
come in and view that show too. And if you're that's open to the cool. public coming in your home, then that some people aren't, some people are. So, um, but that's another area that we were thinking about too. And if they enjoy it in their setting, maybe they acquire it. I don't know. You know, but we can we can. Oh, no, that's about really that cool. Yeah. So just a couple ideas that we've been spitballing in terms of how do we approach this, you know, and, and get the art to people because um, it's you can do it online and you know, like I mentioned, we do it with the video, we do it with the website, but until you're actually there and standing right. in front of a piece, you're never going to get the full effect as you will, you know, um, you, you can't get it online like you can in person. It's so interesting. I've talked to lots of people who are performers and musicians and all that and um you know they heavily rely on the the crowd and the people being in person but you never i mean i don't think a lot of people realize how important it is for an artist a painter something like that that like you really it's really important for the the person to see the piece of art in front of them to be you know struck by it yeah, definitely. You can see, you know, the way the light hits a stroke or how you can make that mark. And, you know, when, you, when you're when you in there, you take a 2D image uh, in person, but in, in a, to a degree, it's actually 3D because you can yep. you know, move yourself around and look at it and get close to it, away from it. When it's on your monitor, too, uh, you know, your device is going to interpret the colors a lot different exactly. than they actually are. And that's a, that, that was a real problem that we're starting to see a new problem in the art world is some collectors will buy a piece online, uh, take delivery of it, and then the colors are totally wrong. And then they say, hey, this wasn't what I thought it would be. I want to return it. So that's a new oh. problem that a lot of artists are going to be running into in the digital age, too, because their crappy monitor could have had a, a bad right. adjustment, you know, not projecting it correctly. So that's a real problem. Use- like graphic design work for um, my my marketing job, and you know it'll look so good on the screen, and then you go and print it out, and it's like, oh, that's not what I did at all. So it's right. like it's hard to adapt with the everyone's screens different. There's not a universal screen, so yeah, definitely. You know that that color scale can be way off. It could be different pixels and things, and that's a a real problem that or uh, new new problems that artists are going to be running into. So that's, and I'm that's sure it. That it will get artistically solved, like everything else has been having to happen right now. Um, if someone wanted to get into looking at contemporary realism, do you have suggestions of some artists besides yourself that you like? Yeah, sure. Uh, so currently, uh, there's a few online that you know I really enjoy. I like um, uh, Jacob Pfeiffer's work. He's that's PF. He's got a, a PF name. Uh, that's really good. Uh, I like Edward Minoff's uh, work as well. Uh, you know, I like most of the artists. Uh, my favorite gallery in the world is Principal Gallery uh, down in uh, Alexandria, Virginia. They also have another location oh, in I Charleston, uh, South Carolina. So. Most of their artists are in that contemporary realism field. So if you want to uh, check out Principal Gallery, uh, you know they have a, a great lineage of uh, people. Now with the blessing of Instagram too, you can go on and just yes. you know follow hashtag uh, contemporary realism, and you'll find a plethora of uh, different artists and things there. So it's great. But I mean, I can appreciate contemporary realism, and then I can go and you know look at a, a Joan Mitchell, which looks like uh, you know kids finger painting. So yeah. just because you know a lot of times people think, well, if you if you're an artist that does this, then you must not appreciate that, and that's not true, right? No. So you can pull inspiration from a lot of different things, and I can appreciate a lot of different things too. So that's that's a, that's a good thing. But I would say, yeah, check out. Uh, you know, those hashtags on Instagram is a great way if you want to introduce yourself to contemporary realism and see what's out there. You I know. love it. That's great yeah. advice. So there's some other things that you really like that I also like that we should talk about. All right. <laughs> Whiskey and cigar. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I certainly have noticed that my consumption of my favorite beverage, whiskey, has gone up slightly just a bit during all of this. <laughs> um, um, are you, do you stick to one, one type of whiskey or are you like, do you like to bop around? Do you like to try different things? What, what do you, what do you drink? Yeah. So I have like, uh, you know, tiers of like what's going on. There's like the special event whiskey, you know, the, the, the guest you haven't seen in a year or two comes over whiskey. Then there's the, uh, 
you know, alone in your studio on a Wednesday night whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> The filler, the filler whiskey that you're gonna do. I would say, you know, uh, my special occasion one that I that I enjoy is uh, my Balvini. Uh, you know, it can go a 12, 16, 18 year. The uh, the Caribbean cask is probably my favorite uh, in terms of my my special occasion one. Now, I, I'll be honest with you, I go into the store and I'm uh, I'm shopping for uh, different types of whiskey just based on the bottle. So I actually brought one on. I got this. Yeah, um, I've done that. This is the Willet. Uh, pot stack because i just thought the bottle was so that cool. is a cool bottle and it's actually in one of my uh, recent paintings you can see uh that in one of the paintings too i, I, I bought it specifically painting. I love it. just for the bottle so <laughs> yeah so so good marketing by willet to put it in that type of bottle as well uh yeah, so, no, i totally purchased bottles just because they're so cool back in hey, when it good. first came out i was obsessed with the angel's envy bottle it's like curved like a lady and then it has right. wings and it's really good tasty right. uh, whiskey too so that's good when it's tasty because a lot of times you get some you know schlag that's hidden in a pretty bottle so <laughs> the yeah. wood is actually or not bad it's just so. so strong you can't even like whew, um yeah. what's it called whistle pig yes i can yeah. i can like do like one tiny sippy of that one and then <laughs> Yeah, if we can get you know 120 proof, 140 proof, yeah, all the better. So, <laughs> yeah, you drink it straight, neat rocks. Two rocks. That's it. All right. Yeah, that's it. And yep. then, the, do you have a cigar that you pair with them, or do you have the, how how into cigars are you? Do you do you have a collection or? Uh, I don't have a collection because I smoke them too much. So. <laughs> <laughs> I hear um, that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I like, uh, I guess I like everything in life as strong and as crazy as possible. So like I said, yeah. 140 proof whiskey, if I'm going to smoke a cigar, I want it to be the darkest, dirtiest, stinkiest, grossest thing that you can possibly find. So uh, I like them black as death and dark and I go with, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I go with I was Maduro. So bummed when we, we, right before all this happened, we were in Key West and it was getting hairy and it was not okay to be out really we were trying to get back as soon as we got there basically but oh the hand rolled cuban cigars down there we didn't get right. to do it because we were like you know that things were shutting down and stuff but the, oh now i want one so bad <laughs> i regret it yeah yeah i like maduro's uh you know I, I, again i got my filler smokes my doing the yard uh yeah. you know lawn smokes <laughs> i love your tears <laughs> yep and then I have the, uh, again, you know, the special company, uh, you know, it'd probably be uh, like an, an Ashton uh, uh, ESG estate grown is uh, you know, a pretty good one. So that's the, uh, the special occasion cigar. So they well, go up and around. I love, here. I love your background right now. It seems like the perfect place to sip on some scotch or some whiskey and smoke a big fat cigar. So. Oh, yeah. You know, you just go on the property and do some gardening. <laughs> ramble around out there that's good that's it that's the think time see that's part of the art too right it's all yes, uh, it's, 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 working. Fuel, it's fuel for the creative process you know that's <laughs> I told, that's what i say about my manhattans all right yeah it's just, <laughs> i like to yeah. write I can't write unless i have a manhattan right that's it you know look at stephen king he doesn't even remember writing cujo he was so messed <laughs> up so, you, know? <laughs> you know there's some there's some intoxication and madness when you enter a creative <laughs> process sometimes. It's just no junk, no soul, you know what they say. <laughs> so besides drinking fabulous whiskey, smoking cigars, watching your kids and painting, have you been watching any movies or TV, reading any books, listening to podcasts? Any recommendations for those watching? Yeah, so recently with the uh, you know the the watching TV and things, um, I've really gotten back into crappy 1950s sci-fi. Nice, uh, right? <laughs> I'm doing my uh, my robot series. I think it just kind of fueled that. Um, I grew up as a kid watching like Mystery Science Theater 3000, so all those old junk movies that they used to review. We watched uh, uh, Catwoman uh, of the Moon the other night, uh, The Creeping Eye. Um, <laughs> What else was there? Um, yeah, Invaders from Mars, you know, just just horrendous movies. <laughs> I can so put them on. Out. Yeah, I can put them on in the background while I zone out and uh, you know just just paint, and they're there, and you don't really have to pay attention to them. It's great, so it works out well. Uh, in terms of uh, contemporary, you know, new films, uh, we watched Wonder Woman the other night. That was nice. pretty good. Um, 
I, my favorite so far I've seen recently was Knives Out. That was uh, real good. My mother-in-law um, keeps suggesting that one. So yeah, that was a good. I grew up in a house like that, kind of, so that Adirondack oh, Victorian so cool. mansion wildness. So that was kind of right at home. Another series that's kind of like that set and setting was um, Lock and Key, uh, which is by Joe Hill, uh, Stephen King's son. That's on Netflix currently. Um, kind of has a Stranger Things vibe, but uh, I like Stranger Things better. But it, it was okay. But a, a family making a lot of bad, dumb decisions. But it yeah. was, other than that, it was a pretty, uh, pretty good series. Yeah, books. Uh, I'm into a lot of nonfiction. It's mainly my thing. Uh, most recent book I read was... Uh, America Before by Graham Hancock talking about alternate history of North America prior oh. to uh, like 12,000 years ago. So I That's like a lot of that ancient civilization and history and those kind of things too. You said you used to have a podcast. Yeah, I used to do a, a comedy podcast with a buddy of mine who was uh, based around automotive. I was in the automotive industry for 24 years too prior to this. So we talked about the, uh, <laughs> yeah, talked about the craziness and absurdity of uh, – know the auto industry and things so it was pretty fun he's uh kind of taking the reins now and he's going to go do it on his own so i'm just too busy with everything else but what's maybe i'll called? come on as a guest yeah it was good it was fun what's it called uh that was service advisor max is uh steve's uh running that podcast still it's still out there so service advisor max was the show awesome i just, just haven't about gotten into crazy. podcasts podcast yet well i and i never realized how many people are doing them and are listening to them. I'm trying to get better about it because it's- It was insane. You know, we just, we built up tens of thousands of people listening to him and I just drink booze and talk nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I love Sorry, it. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. You know, I feel bad for them, for the, the people listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I feel that way about this show. I'm like, thank you for watching, but why are you doing this? Yeah. This is my cabin fever dream. <laughs> yep. You subject you did it again. You subjected yourself to another hour of me rambling. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Just think what you could have done. Good. I like to ask everyone because I think it's really important to talk about openly is mental health. And I ask every guest that's on what they have or have not been doing for their mental health during all of this. So yeah, so, uh, you know, the art of itself was uh, brought on, like I mentioned earlier, just right. as a cathartic release, um, you know, for me to deal with loss. Uh, you know, my mother, my, my, my father passed a few years after that. So a lot of that. So that is my focus uh, for that. Um, in terms of physical activity, got back into uh, cycling. Now that the weather's finally trying nice. to kind of cooperate. So um, we got a nice uh, rail trail here locally in Nashua that runs down through like Broughton. So you can go out and it's flat and there's no hills, which I appreciate. <laughs> so oh, you, can yeah. do, you can do 15 miles in a, you know hour, hour and a half or so and bang that out. So that's a nice, uh, nice area. There's not a lot of traffic and things. So got back into doing that, trying to, you know, eat responsibly with all this because you figure yeah, you're, you're fine, hard. right? That, you know, everyone, you know, they call it COVID-19. I think it's more like COVID-20, meaning 20 yeah. pounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I've been yeah. eating. If I want it, I eat it. I don't care. I've, I've right? been saying that none of the calories count during COVID. <laughs> what happens into the COVID stays in the Yeah, place. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Once yep. I can go back out into the world, I'll start caring a little bit more, maybe. Right. I yeah, still love like, my know, vegetables, though. It. <laughs> Make sure. That's it. People see me a half hour a week online. That's it. So that's, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> so before we get to our final word, there's something I actually want to ask you. If someone out there is watching now or later and they've always wanted to, to, to paint, to get into art, what, what do you, what would you say to them? Yeah. So, you know, I've tried a lot of things to motivate me to paint, you know, like, Oh, let's go to a museum. Let's go on a vacation. Let's go walk around the woods and everything that I've ever tried. Painting is the only thing that's ever worked. Um, I think, uh, you know, the more I paint, the more I want to paint. But I think a lot of people get in intimidated by, you know, all the colors, the chemicals, the equipment, all these things. Um, I really try to break it down for a lot of people. You don't need a lot of this stuff. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, I can't draw, so I can't paint. And I've always said, if you're trying to, you know, draw a horse and it comes out looking like a house, well, yeah, you might want to rethink that. But, you know, if it, if it if it kind of looks like what you're trying to do, then you've accomplished what you're trying to do. Um, you know, you look at all the different interpretations of things. And I actually kind of uh, appreciate 
people, uh, their, their version of things when they try to create it, I think is very interesting, right? Then someone that can get it spot on. It's like a, a child's art. You know, you look at kid art. I, I just love that stuff. You know, like Picasso kind of had that weird looking thing. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, in terms of like approach, it's always been uh, in my mind and things was uh, easy by the inch, hard by the mile. So if you take it one step at a time and just take things easily, you know, you can eventually get there. You're not going to be a master overnight. You know, no. I, I'm not. I mean, I learn things every single time I make a painting. I will never stop learning. There's always every day uh, you learn something new about that process. There's not an artist or a, a painter in the world that says, I know absolutely everything there is to know about this. I mean, that's, that's the, so exciting. Yeah, that's kind of the fun of it is it's it's never ending. And, um, you know, but also some of the tragedy, you'll, you'll die never mastering because it's impossible oh. to master. You, you can't, it, it just, you can't do it. <laughs> you I always try to outdo yourself. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, so you don't don't be intimidated. I would say, you know, and, and keep it easy because you don't need to have a lot of fancy equipment, a lot of things. You could, you know, pick up a lump of charcoal out of your fireplace and make marks on a paper, and you're doing it. So boom, all right, yeah. I love it. Anyone can yeah. do it. Right. So for anyone who's new to this broadcast, at the end of the show, I always allow the guests to have the final word because I talk so much all the damn time. This is the guest opportunity to. Be inspirational, tell jokes, dance, sing, shout out people, vent, uh, shout out anything they want. I don't care. I shut up and I put on some fabulous sunglasses. So, <laughs> Joel, it's your turn and the floor right. is yours. Wow, nice sunglasses. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, so, again, uh, I'd like to thank you, Kelly, for this opportunity. It's fun. I'm, I'm glad you're doing this and everything. Um, yeah, so we just, you know, in terms of the art world, if you're if you're interested in art or want to learn art, just like we mentioned earlier, just, just start out slow and just start picking up, you know, a few things here and there. Um, if you have any questions, I would be happy to help, uh, you know, talk with you. Um, you can hit me up on uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, uh, all those places, and I do respond. I'm not one of those people that, you know, you send them a question or, or an email and then they ghost out on you. I don't really understand what's the point of that unless you like you know, getting a million a day or something. Um, you know, in terms of everything going on in the world, um, you know, please bear in mind that everyone's going to have a difference of opinion uh, than what you have. And that's okay, right? There's some people are going to say, you know, stay home, don't stay home, open it, close it, whatever. Um, we really need to work together. We have a lot of, uh, obviously, division in this country about almost everything out there. There's nothing that we have that is one thing that we all unify on, which is very, very sad. Um, but we have strength in numbers. And I think when you find people that, you know, are arguing their difference of opinion, it's because they honestly care. And we need those people that care because it's people that don't say anything. You wonder if they care at all. So, you know, it, having been in business uh, myself, uh, you know, many years, I found that the guys that complain the most have the best ideas um, because they're passionate about what they're doing. So if you see someone, they have a difference of opinion, know that they have passions. That's the first thing. So they don't need to have your opinion. That's OK. Um, you meet in the middle somewhere on most things. So, um, you know, I say stay safe, you know, make logical decisions. If it's best for you and your family, then do that. Uh, but not everybody's going to think the way that you do, uh, no matter how much you argue with them online or or, you know, want to bicker with them, they're not going to change their way. Some people have, you know, set, made up their mind, and that's okay. But uh, we need to respect other people's opinion. And I would look for more unity than division over most things. I think we'll get along and, and go further much faster than we currently are. Great, great word of advice and wisdom. Um, Joel, it has been such a pleasure to have you here today. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad to do it. I look forward to doing it again. Hopefully not, though, because it means that lockdown would be over. Yes, hopefully <laughs> we're not in lockdown. Right? You're going to have to Forever. do unlock down. Yeah. We're going to have to do it out in the park or something next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I want to thank everyone so much for tuning in now or later, for liking, commenting, and sharing, for sticking around with me during all of this and watching and listening to our fabulous guests like Joel. 
Um, I hope that you gained something from watching this broadcast today. Tomorrow, our guest is Jeannie Matos. She is the Youth Workforce uh, Manager at Madison Park Development Corporation, so she is a co-worker of mine. We're going to talk a lot about opportunities out there right now for youth, um, what youth are going to be doing this summer with this continuing in Boston, and probably dancing because Jeannie loves to dance. So, Joel, thank you again so, so much for being on. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Please stay home, stay safe, wear a mask, wash your hands, do whatever you need to do to be safe for yourself and your family, and draw something today. Just go for it.